Every millisecond matters in the race to great user experiences. And our live and VOD content delivery enables amazing streaming experiences virtually anywhere, anytime, on any device. With super fast speeds, low latency, and load times. We accelerate delivery of digital files by providing fast, uninterrupted downloads. With a high-performing, deep Global Edge footprint, we deliver security patches and software updates quickly and reliably. Lumen, the platform for amazing things. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Asia OTT. My name is Gauthier Diman. I'm the director of content delivery services for Lumen, uh, one of the largest CDN on the planet. And today, my session will be kind of like sharing with you all the lessons we have learned in the past year. Uh, Louis mentioned the growth of OTT, the growth of live video service on demand services. Here I'm going to focus on, on, on live video services. And it's been, that growth has been shared with a few pain points. We have learned a lot about the ability and the challenges of delivering very large live video services in Asia and all over the world, but in that case, we're going to focus on Asia. And my goal today is through a few examples, a few use cases, share with you what we've learned or we have improved the way we do live delivery, the mistakes that we've seen, the solution we found to those issues. And hopefully at the end of my 15 minute session, everyone will know a little bit more than when we started. So let's talk a little bit to start about the challenges that, that we had when we do live video services. There's been the World Cup, there's been the Olympics, there's been uh, the first uh, world champion of badminton in Singapore. So all those events generate a lot of traffic. So what are we trying to do? Well, the first goal that we have is keep our services running with the same tier one performances that we had before we started seeing that growth in the region. The second part, and it's really the essence of live video event, is a really drastic growth within a few minutes. You have a live channel that has content, regular content, all of a sudden you have that really premium event that comes up and you need to multiply the size of your audience and your bandwidth of delivery by 100, 1,000, 5,000. So we're gonna talk about how can we achieve that kind, that kind of growth, that kind of scale up within a few seconds. We've seen also, and everyone has looked at the news, way more outages this year that we've seen in the past across cloud providers, across CDN, and it happens to everyone. You know, there's no pointing fingers. With such an incredible growth, there is pain point for everyone. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how can you make sure that you're ready for when a technical outage is going to happen. And finally, we've seen more geographical diversity. With the, with the rise of OTT, the rise of those live events, you're gonna address audience not only in Asia Pacific, but all over the world. You're gonna target your expat population in North America, in Europe, in Latin America, and we're gonna talk about what we've learned to make sure that that experience for those all of Asia users works perfectly. So let's talk a little bit, let's dig a little bit into those key points that I was mentioning. So, the variation of traffic. What you see on that slide is a typical graph of what we're seeing at Lumen where we have a tier one premium live event. What that means is that I'm delivering roughly one terabit per second of traffic as a regular live event channel, and all of a sudden my, my content is so popular that my traffic is multiplied by seven. So, or am I going to be able to cope with such a drastic increase of traffic? The geodiversity uh, also is really important. You can see here it was for uh, Asian broadcasters, but they have an expat population and a viewership all over the world. So you can see that the traffic is literally coming from every region of the planet, and you need to make sure that your architecture is really good, not only for Asia, but your global growth. One of the things that we've noticed the most this year is that the challenge is not about scaling the architecture, it's about scaling the access to eyeballs. So every CDN knows their business really well. Every tier one CDN at Lumen, we know to deploy new pop, we know to build a really big arch arch architecture, we know to scale that architecture to be ready for live event, right? But the trick is that, do we have the right access 
to the eyeballs? Do we have the right connectivity to the ISP? Do, they have, do we have the ability to reach out to your end users? And that's something that we focused a lot this year because most of the technical issue we saw was peering issues, access to the ISP's network. And so that's something to consider when you're going to build your architecture. It's not only about how much server capacity do you have. It's like, does your architecture have enough access to your end user's eyeballs? And the outage, you know, due to that peering issue, the outage that we're seeing now on, on, on the network are at outages that are way more localized. You know, it's not binary. It's not my entire platform goes down. No one can see the video. It's going to be linked to those peering issues. So it's going to be the users, maybe on a specific 5G network, maybe on a specific ISPs that are going to have specific issues. And so when you're going to consider your load balancing, your redundancy architecture, you need to think not about a global scale, but really about a local ISP level redundancy. What happens if the users on Singtel cannot access my content? What happens if the users on Telstra are having extreme rebuffering compared to other ISP, right? So it's all going to be about digging down deeper into my redundancy architecture. With that increase of traffic, the access to your origin is going to be the most important. So obviously, when I'm, right now I'm exposing the issues that we're seeing, and then I'll give you the solutions. But one of these solutions is basically multi-CDN and more vendors, right? Well, you still have only one origin. So when you're going to build that architecture, when you're going to design that multi-CDN architecture, how do you make sure that the origin where your content resides is available to every single vendor that you contracted with? Okay, that's really important. It's not only about the delivery, it's also about the access to the origin. And things like direct connectivity to your origin platform are gonna be keys, key checkbox that you need to have with your CDN vendors to make sure they have direct access, not using the public internet, but direct access to your origin live and on demand. And then how do you protect that origin? So let's say everyone has a lot of connectivity to your origin. Everyone has dedicated links. Well, everyone is going to come at the same time onto your origin, right? And we've seen in the past, we've seen this year's origin not able to cope with such a drastic increase of requests. And the origin start to slow down, to start to 5xx, and, and then it's a disaster because no one can access your content. So making sure that you set up the right mid-tier architecture, those services called Origin Shield that you have across every CDN vendor, every tier one CDN vendor on the market, is something that is for you going to be really key into making sure you don't overwhelm your origin architecture and that everyone is going to be able to access your content. All right, so let, let's talk a little bit. I covered the basics. Now let's go a little bit deeper into some of the aggravating factors to those challenges that we've noticed this year. Obviously, load balancing tools. So when, when I move into Asia, what I noticed is that a lot of those big OTT service, services had vendor diversity, but not diversity within the same service. What that means is that you had one vendor that was managing the VOD, one vendor that was managing the live, but if one or the other was going down, the entire service was wiped out. So it's not only important to have more redundancy within the same service, but also make sure that you have the right load balancing tools and that that load balancing is done automatically without human interaction. Outage happens really quick. You don't have the right, you don't have the time to have someone, a human, looking at the stats, seeing that you have an outage, and then taking in an action. Everything needs to be automated. Therefore, making sure that you have the right load balancing, uh, the right real-time monitoring is very important. We've gone from a few years back to like server-side monitoring to client-side monitoring. And today, if you don't have a service that is within your video player, within your client side application, while well, you're, not, you're not delivering best practice OTT services. So really key important part. Live supports, so the difference between OTT and live events is that the time frame that you have to react, if there's some, an event happening during your live, your live event is much, much, much smaller. You have a few minutes, less than five, we consider that Lumen, to find the issue and remediate the issue, right? So 
having the right support, having the right support in region, having the right bridge, having the right l Slack channel or whatever real-time communication service you have is going to be extremely key to make sure to make sure that you can address any any issue that arises during the live event. Because 15 minutes on a basketball game at the Olympics is basically 25% of the game that your audience is going to miss. So every second counts when it comes to support for live event. So that's all the problems. Now let's talk about how are we going to be able or are we going to be able to solve those? As I mentioned, the key aspect to that to building a, a good live event architecture is having vendor redundancy on every single service, every single stream that you're going to have. But there's a trick because everyone knows, you know, people at home, uh, at your office right now, you're saying, well, we know we need load balancing. It's been said for many, many, many years. Good. I agree with you. Now, let's talk about why it's not that easy. Because people in Asia still have commitments, still have commercial agreements that prevent you to do that load balancing properly. If I have a load balancing service, but when I switch to my backup vendor, I'm getting charged by my primary vendor, even though I'm not delivering traffic, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have an issue, right? So I have a redundancy setup that is good technically, but it's costing me a lot of money when I need to trigger that load balancing, okay? So the main focus that we have right now that we're seeing across the industry is the ability to build contract for your CDN vendors or your streaming providers that do not have any commitment. The commitment is dead. That's bad for us on the CDN side. That's very good for you on the customer side because you can, bring, you can build really dynamic architecture where load balancing between vendors in real time is not going to impact your cost and is not going to impact your business. So make sure when you set up your architecture, when you're going to renew your CDN contract, that you have usage-based agreement. I'm going to use you, but if you have an issue, I can switch to my backup or my secondary backup without you charging me extra money because I have an extremely high commitment. The origin, as I talked about, is going to be really key. A lot, of, a lot of OTT services initially to their origin services with their first CDN providers. And that has issues. I talked about access that has access issues, there's commercial issues, there are customers that are going to charge you when another CDN comes connecting to your origin. So making sure that both on a technical standpoint and a commercial standpoint, you put your origin in a neutral environment. What that means is an environment that has extremely good connectivity for all your CDN vendors, and also where you're not going to be charged twice, one time by the CDN delivering your content, and one time for the traffic leaving your origin, making sure you have those right agreement in place is going to be extremely key. Okay? The main impediment to a good best practice load balancing architecture for live event is your commercial contract. Your technical people, they're really good. They know what they're doing. They know how to build a redundant architecture. But your procurement and your commercial terms are going to be the main reason why it's going to cost you a fortune right now to build a best practice OTT architecture. And then something that is really close to my heart personally coming from the peer-to-peer the, the -peer video world before, before joining, joining Lumen is you need to make sure that your redundancy is not only based on CDN load balancing, but on alternative technology. You can have a first layer for live event of redundancy, but you need to make sure you consider a second layer with different technology. Those technology could be WebRTC peer-to-peer. -peer. Obviously, that's something that is really close of my, to my heart. That works really well, and that actually works the best when you have those big live events. You can have 70 to 80% of your traffic delivered by the peer-to-peer -peer network. And then look at different technology. You have open caching, which is making a big push this year. I think you know if we meet again next year uh, at, at, at that same conference, Open caching is going to have a big, big, big space into the industry. Uh, it's been around for a long time, but now we're seeing like those key uh, thought leader customer onboarding on open caching. And then alternative technology like multicast ABR, for example, that allows you to deliver really efficiency efficiently within an ISP network is going to be something extremely important. So not only building that CDN load balancing that you guys already know about, but make sure you introduce innovative technology that can take, you know, take over if 
there's, there, there's, there's some kind of issue with your CDN vendors. Finally, all of that, all that architecture, all those alternative technologies, all of that is nothing if you don't have the right tools to activate those solutions at the right time. And so, you know, I was telling you initially about the peering issue, the, the more localized level of outages that we're seeing this year, right? Well, you need, why is it so important to have client side? Because client side allows you to do personalized decision making based on each individual device. So I'm not going to take my Singapore users and move them from CDN A to CDN B or CDN A to peer to peer. I'm going to make that decision on an individual user basis. I can be here sitting next to Louis. Louis is on a Singtel network. I'm on a Starhub network. We're not going to get our content the same way, even though we're, st we're sitting in the same room. And that is a very important notion. To do that properly, you need to make sure that you have that, those right tools. You need to make sure that you have those right client-side real-time analytics and client-side load balancing to make sure that everything you build upstream, that CDN architecture, that CDN redundancy, that, that delivery technology redundancy is going to be able to be triggered when it's the most required. The last part is that that load balancing also know the main difference is that before we were seeing customers triggering during live event load balancing when you had really like issues with the user experience. Know that load balancing is really more refined. It's not going to be about can I access the stream or not. It's going to be, well, Gautier, you've been watching 1080p on your iPad Pro the last six times you watch a badminton game in Singapore, and this time you're watching in 720p. That is not the user experience that I expect for you. So I'm going to switch you to an alternative delivery method or an alternative vendor, because no, I have learned from what you are to expect from my service, and if it's not to the standards that you expect of my service, I'm going to be able to trigger that switch in architecture to make sure I deliver the best experience possible. On that note, I want to thank you very much for your time. Um, we'll be available at Lumen on the virtual trade show all day, and then you will have our contact, of course, if you want to drop us a note or an email to, to have more questions. We can give you a lot more example. We can go much more into details into what we've seen, show you logs, show you stats, and we look forward to talking to you very soon. Thank you. Gautier, thank you very much for that. Um, we've got time just for a sort of couple of questions, and we've, we've mm -hmm. had some come in. A huge amount of information in there, and I, I just want to take the opportunity to sort of perhaps unpack a little bit of it sure. and, and not ask you to repeat yourself, but perhaps delve a little bit more. The first question is, is really around low latency. Um, and, I mean, how do you see low latency? So that's a really good question. So low latency, basically, is something difficult for us CDNs mm -hmm. because... In those live architecture, we have a lot of safety valves. You know, we have buffers, we have, we have a lot of ways to make sure that even if we have a small latency, that's not going to impact your user experience. Right. Doing low latency means removing all those safety features. All those safety valves are off. So what that means, that means the points when you're doing low latency about redundancy is even more important because you have less safety mechanism, less safety valve than when you have regular higher latency in the 20 to 30 seconds. So low latency is really important because it's gonna drastically improve your user experience, but the, your ability to manage multiple vendors, your ability to provide redundancy in your service is gonna be that much more important that you don't have any safety valve left when you're doing low latency. Okay, really interesting. And then, look, second question is, is, I mean, you talked about sports and, and it's diving into the sports question, which is, from a CDN point of view, mm -hmm. what, what, are the, what are the biggest challenges when, when you come to live sports? That's a really good question. So, so, so the biggest challenges we have is really that ability to ramp up within a few seconds, right? Like, it puts enormous stress on any CDN architecture because at the beginning of the game, if you watch, like, a, a soccer game, you're going to have your baseline users, and then when the game starts, you're going to multiply your traffic by 10, by 20, within only 60 seconds. So the biggest challenges that we see on the CDN side around live services is making sure we have that ability to scale extremely quickly, much, much faster than what you would do with a regular OTT service. And so those notion of peerings, those notion of access to eyeballs are going to be that much more critical because 
you, I don't have two weeks to scale your on-demand OTT service. I have 60 seconds. So the planning that comes ahead, the work that we're going to do with our customer to estimate the best, where is the audience going to come in from, what region, what ISP, the size of the audience that they expect, and have all of that prepared days or weeks in advance is going to be that much more important to us. So it's, it's a planning problem. You just got to make sure you're on top of exactly. it before it's, the live It's a planning problem. Yeah. And, and the good thing to be really transparent with you is that all customers tend to always overestimate their usage. So that is really good. That means we're able to build an architecture that is much bigger than what we end up seeing uh, during the live event. But that's a good problem to have. Absolutely. Gautier, it's been absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank really, you. Really appreciate it. Thank you for organizing that event, and we look forward to talking everyone uh, to everyone on the virtual trade show. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks.